Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some and peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. Listen closely, you. First, I'm going to give a shout out to uh, my last Cash App donors. Um, expansion Wiring, Senor Coleman and Charles Watkins. I mean it from the bottom of my black heart and from the depths of my black mind when I say thank you. Before that, it was uh, Brother Campbell. To Triv E. Deadman, Mr. Zeke, and Gail at Knight, and Senor Coleman, Red Falls Black, and MLR. Especially to MLR, shouts out to you for your consistency and generosity rolled into one. And MLR, I want to give you a shout out because of your support even for other content creators. I listen to Tia San Johnson, uh, Average Man Unplugged, El Guapo at times. I, I, I can't remember everyone's name, but um, when they go live at times, I think Dennis Sperling and, you know, you, you supporting us. And I really appreciate that. And I ask that the law support you and make you rich for doing it. Um, as I stated, I uh, am I'm in a position right now to just make it this month only because of an abnormally high salary expense. Um, there are other expenses and I'm, I'm used to covering them and I've, I've got them in the budget. It's just that the salary expense for the last month was abnormally high. But because of you, I am in a position to make it. As I stated before, I would have fallen behind this month. This month is just a busy month. I've had to travel. Actually, I'm going to have to travel uh, twice that I know of, maybe three times. And one of the tra one of the trips is I've really, really extensive and therefore expensive uh, because my wife's mother and sister are also in the country visiting. I have to meet up with them in another city later. But we have to show them around. You've helped out with that. I've used what you've sent for the reasons that I've stated, but because you made you because you have made that possible, I'm not overextending myself and, and coming up short at the end. I appreciate that. I open this up to record a message about what you see in the title. This is not about my hatred. This is about the hatred we face, not the hatred we feel. If the war is over or if it is ending, then that's fine and dandy, but there's a reason that I said don't go to the table. I don't normally like to tell you what to do. And BGS uh, has stated as well that he doesn't like to tell you what to think, but rather how to think. What you notice so that you can come to your own conclusions. And there is an African proverb that states that the wise look where the wise man is pointing or they look where the elder is pointing. The child and the fool can only see the tip of the finger but they don't look at the direction of where he's pointing. Now, with that being said, um, I also, as a teacher, like to teach people how to teach themselves. I, um, I've seen that some students have picked up on this. I'm marking essays now. On occasion, I have to just give an instruction because as a language teacher, I have to say, OK, well, this is correct and this is wrong. But let me tell you a few base rules by which you can avoid the errors, because if you're an Arab and you learn an error first, you'll just repeat it. And then when someone corrects you, you won't want to repeat the correction. And that is true. I have students who don't stop making the same errors. They just keep doing it again and again and again. And they'll never quit. And I have to take points off because they'd never stop. Some never punctuate. No, no joke. They, they, they don't punctuate in Arabic. So when they write in English, they don't punctuate and both are wrong. In this case is one thing I do have to say to us. 
I have to say don't go back to the table, not because everyone will avoid it. Somebody's going to go back. But I have to say don't go back to the table because if the bulk of us went back, what message would that send to them? After what they've done, after all of the deception and after how much worse they treated us than other women, what message would it send if we went back to the table? They hate us. And that is something many of you are going to doubt. The war may be over. It may be ending in some other areas and it may still be continuing in others. But the hatred is still there. And that's why you cannot afford to go back to the table. But why do I say the hatred is there? Well, first, you have to understand that it was hatred from before. One, the deception. You see, you can look at motives that people have. People have motives of greed or laziness. We want to own things and have a lot of things. We also want to not work hard for them. Now, when you can obey one of those instincts or the other at any given time, you almost can never obey both. It's rare that you can't obey both. Situations in which you can obey both are exceptions. They're not the rule. When you see somebody disobey one of those instincts, it is to obey the other instinct to satisfy it or... You may see somebody disobey both instincts so that somebody else can benefit. I may work hard, so I disobey the instinct of laziness and then I give what I got from working, disobeying the instinct for greed as well. But that is so that somebody else can have both. They can obey the instinct of laziness and greed. I work hard for something to give it to somebody else. That is not hatred that is love if i am working hard to attain something i've disobeyed the instinct for laziness and then i take what i have attained and i give it away and it is not to somebody's benefit then what does that leave well that means that i did it to somebody's detriment now what motive would i have for that that would be vengeance or hatred either self-defense vengeance with or without hatred or just hatred do you see now when sisters forego their own benefit and they work hard and they attain certain things and then they utilize these things not to the benefit of us but to our detriment is it self-defense we're not attacking them is it vengeance? Most of us have not done anything to provoke vengeance. We don't even get that close to them. Do We don't have the kind of access. What does that leave? Hatred. If they're willing to engage in deception and the deception does not benefit them, then what is it? Okay, it doesn't benefit them. Well, it harms us. Hatred. And if it doesn't harm us, they think it harms us. That's hatred. The motive is still the same. Hatred. Now, where does that leave us? If the hatred was there, low-boiling contempt at minimum, baseline, agitated at times to something else, averaging out to be something beyond a low-boiling contempt, then what the hell does that leave us? They don't like each other because they have to compete with each other for us. But they go to great lengths cooperating with each other whom they don't like. So that we are deceived into thinking that they never compete for us because we carry a negative value. Even convincing themselves that we carry a negative value to the extent that they are hurt and harmed when they get older. What the F do you think that is? No matter how much they don't like each other, they hate you and me. Gentlemen, that is not okay. We got to stop going along with that. It's hatred. Why do we say that's okay? It's not. It's hatred. At what point do we fight back and say no more? Well, we did start to shoot back and fire back and the environment also came along and changed a lot for us. We don't have the laws we need. And one of the first laws that needs to be on the books is polyandry is still legal, but polygyny must be legal. 
That, that needs to be on the books. Polygyny must be legal. We need some other things in place. You know, the fair treatment of the different wives needs to be there as a provision. I think there needs to be a limit at four because some guys say, well, you know, if you legalize polygyny, then most guys just don't get none. Well, there's a balance. If you don't have polygyny at all, well, this is how the women act. It's not legal at all. This is how they act. You can't have nobody else and then they won't screw you. They're waiting on you to cheat so they can blame you. That's their weapon. You can't marry someone else. So if you lay with someone else outside of the marriage you got with them, it's cheating. It's adultery. They're waiting on you to commit adultery so that they can blame you for it. You get it? That's part of the plan. So you got to have polygyny on the table. It's got to be an option. But some dudes are right. If you have no controls on polygyny, then, yeah, you get a bunch of women sharing the same few wealthiest men. Mm -mm. Put a control on it. Four is a perfect number. As a cap, four wives at one time. There's a reason for that. It works. Concubines don't have a limit. I would state this too. The point of this is that it's a hatred. The deception to which you and I have been victim um, is born out of hatred. They hate each other because of their competition. And we know they don't just compete. They hate each other. It's not not personal. They hate each other. So if they hate each other. Because they're competing, but they're all willing to agree with each other so that we don't see ourselves as that for whom they are competing. That's hatred. It's beyond what they have for each other. You see there's competition and then there's treachery. How are you betrayed by somebody with whom you're in a competition? Well, the only way that your competitor can be your traitor is if there were rules upon which you agreed in the competition. So what rule to which have they agreed such that one can betray the other? That is a rule that they would all work to keep you in the dark and not hip to your value and then someone comes along and explains or either they either show you your value demonstrate it or tell you your value that's when they're called to pick me they're not called to pick me because they don't value themselves they're called to pick me because they did not lie to you about your lack of value the ones calling them pick me are calling them this because they hate you too they're not only looking out for their own interests it's not working out for their own interests all they have left is what they can do against you and the pick won't let them do it. Brothers, when a lot of you began to realize at some point in your lives that you were attracting single mothers only, but you didn't want to tell this to too many people because you would have been blamed, men and women alike. Women would have said, well, what are you doing that you can't get a woman without kids and become the baby daddy, the first baby daddy. And the men would have said, yeah, man, that sounds like a you problem, dog. I wouldn't tell that to too many women. This is going to make you look bad. Because the men were thinking like the women. But when you begin to realize this, and a lot of you did, a lot of us went through that. When you begin to realize this, what did you eventually begin to notice? What, what conclusion did you eventually draw collectively? Those of you that are now in the black manosphere and went through this, you began to realize that all of them weren't single moms. It wasn't that. It wasn't that all of them had kids. You got a lot of sisters that ain't got no kids too. But it was that they weren't willing to give you a shot until they had some other man's kids for you to raise. This means that the single moms were picking you because they had because they were single moms. They would not have given you a chance if they were childless. This means they undervalued you. And many of you at first began to suspect this, but you wouldn't say it. And then eventually someone had the courage to say it. And other men said, yeah, damn, you too, huh? What the hell do you think that was? 
the childless single women weren't going to value you because they had been told not to do that. Well, who the hell told them? Why did they go along with it? It wasn't to their benefit. So why did they go along with it? It didn't have to be to their benefit as long as it was not to yours. This means that the single mom and the childless woman had to agree that you were of a negative value, but they couldn't really convince themselves of that long term. Could they convince themselves? I'm sure they did. But long term, no. So that means that they had to not only can, you know, as long as they could convince themselves of that, they did. But when they could no longer convince themselves of that, they had to be in agreement that they were still going to try to keep you convinced. That's hatred. There was no benefit in this for them past a certain point. They just did it anyway. For what? It's not ego. It's not pride. No. It was hatred. Women in the Philippines are telling you to spoon feed a husband. On El Guapo's channel. They're showing you they don't hate you and they actually value you. You. The Latinos, African Latinos and non-African Latinas are showing you that they value you. And if they are single moms and, and, you know, Colombia has a higher rate of that than the States. But if they're single moms, they don't turn around and give you the impression that they would have only been with you because they're single moms. And that if they were childless, you wouldn't stand a chance. See, some white American women who are single moms have let it slip Look at strong, successful male. His channel's full of this. White guy talking to the manosphere, you know, to the white manosphere. They let it slip. And so their men began to realize what the what was going on. Honestly, there were some sisters that didn't have kids that when they realized that some of these brothers felt lucky to have these single moms they had while these men were childless. Some of these sisters just to turn these men down a notch or to bring them down a notch would say, well, she wouldn't be with you if she didn't have them kids. So they let that slip just in the effort to still reinforce to you and me the notion that we have a negative value. That's hatred. There are benefits to this. There are things that they thought they could exploit, but why did the women who could not benefit from this anymore still carry that on? Because it was more important for you and me to not know what we were worth than it was for them to fix the error and get a benefit. When they had nothing to lose by telling the truth, they went along with the deception and really only recently are more than beginning to tell the truth. Oftentimes because either they finally have a son or a nephew about whom they care, or maybe a brother about whom they care. If they do care or because they're seeking attention and social media is a way to get attention, but you still have to have something that no one said before. So this is what they've got left. They don't have any more secrets to divulge to shock people into making them go viral. So they start to tell the secrets and I myself will share their confessions not to make them go viral or to stop them from going viral, but I will share their confessions because, well, they're giving up the game. Red from Diaries was instrumental in this. I think she went on Poor Man's podcast. She passed away of cancer maybe last August, not this August that just passed, but the one before that, I think. But she gave up all the information. I put it on my Odyssey channel. I downloaded it. Yeah, and then put it, posted it on Odyssey. On YouTube, I could share the links, but on Odyssey, I download and downloaded it and reposted it. Yeah, it's there. Red Fem Diaries, also known as Nyla, sat up and told us that single moms cannot respect childless men that pick them. And if they don't pick the men when they're single moms that they would have picked when they were childless. One man is to breed and the other one is to, is to feed. One man gets to play. The other one has to pay. Most of us are expected to feed and to pay so that the other men can breed while they play. 
The few get to breed while they play. We are to feed and pay. Yeah. So she gave it up. This is a, a lack of respect. A low boiling contempt. And that's the baseline. So the slightest emotional ag agitation turns that low boiling contempt into hatred. And understand this. You already know the Western black woman cannot learn to not hate you. You can't convince her that you that she shouldn't hate you. You can be select and they turn around and try to do things to trick you into making yourself non-select when they picked you because you were select. Kiki Palmer, anyone? But because Usher is famous, it's OK for him while he's burning to serenade her. And she respond positively. Yeah. Then she wants to lie and say she hit that man. What the hell is that about? I mean, say that that man hit her. Come on, I st as I stated before, y'all, you, you all and I know, they don't let ambiguous looking men like that hit them. The Rock can't abuse a, a, a sister and get away with it. Can he overpower? Yeah, but is she going to, she'll fight back right off the bat. Now, you give him a heavier melanin count, widen his nose and his lips, let him stay bald, and he hits her, maybe she won't hit back. But The Rock cannot terrify a sister into not hitting him back. Doesn't work like that. His father may be so, but The Rock is bigger than his dad used to be. Nope. Mm -mm. Can't happen. Mm -mm. Because she views us through the eyes of Zaddy, remember? Now, we've agreed that she views us through the eyes of Zaddy, just like we've agreed that we've learned to view each other through her eyes until we break free of that black manosphere being an environment in which we break free of that. Now, if we have agreed that she views us through Zaddy's eyes, I ask you, what has Zaddy shown, historically speaking, that he feels towards us? OK. I mean. You know, the history between us and them, that tells you right there. So if she views us through his eyes, what the hell does that tell you she feels? Do not come along and tell me that that is not hatred. You just heard the proof that it is. I hope that this has been a benefit to you. Thank you for listening. And as always, black heart, black mind, black out. As-salamu alaykum, black heterosexual, non-select male power just because they don't like it. Black patriarchy until extinction or judgment day. Thank you for flying again with us on Jet Black Airways, where Jet Black is also a verb. Keep Jet Black with us to the wings and the wheels fall off. And as you exit the Jet Black aircraft, if you choose to punch the cash app button, please do not enter in any numbers that are going to cause you difficulty later on. Gender justice forever. <laughs>